a very good morning day three in saudi mecca and it's fajr time and it is super 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 busy super peaceful super busy we're on day three day one was umrah day two was the wharf and literally i'm up i've literally had to crawl out of bed we've had about four or five hours sleep all out of bed and honestly coming from the toilet to the window just here i'm ha i'm literally walking like a penguin that's how bad it is so just be mindful there's so much walking to do uh and we're not used to it i'm not used to it anyway <laughs> right so it just it really takes it out of you and we've just been i think i'm surviving on painkillers right now but just be mindful that there is walking to do but look at that for a scene I'm just gonna go back to bed but this place is so beautiful so overpowering i just stood in the window here just making supplications and duas you're gonna do loads of that literally loads because you don't know if you're gonna ever come back here ever again and you're just gonna make the most of it you've gotta just just take a breather absorb that's been my word main word here absorb stop think right and just remember every single person that asked you before you came uh, to make dua for them honestly I, I tried my level best everything i remembered to say it while i'm here um yeah so yeah just take that moment just take a step back i, I pray that you honestly pray. every one of you that has uh, the intention of coming here uh, may Allah bring you all and may us bring us back as well uh, because this I, I recommend to every single one of you you've got to try it you've got to try it once in a lifetime right Umrah Hajj is obligation Umrah if you can as well right but you've got to do this 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 is something magical I've been around the world I've been everywhere honestly I have I've stayed in so many places, but this is just the next level. Uh, you know, it's such a spiritual thing. Even though, like like I said moments earlier, I'm walking like a penguin. But, nah, I don't want to go back to bed. For example, if I was in Dubai, I would literally go back to bed and I wouldn't think about it ever, ever again, right? But I, I want to get out. I want, I want to. I want to do it. This is what, what sort of feelings I've got right now. I really want to do it. I want to get back into the action. I want to go and have breakfast. I don't really want to sleep, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'll stop talking. Right, uh, let's get some breakfast. Right, breakfast. It's a, either an M2 or M3. We've come to M2. Trying to find where the breakfast is located. Welcome to the breakfast table. I'm absolutely starving. Right? I'm eating a lot more than what I would normally have. I think it's because I'm taking up a lot more calories as I'm walking around everywhere. I've gone for hash brown. I've gone for sausages. I've gone for scrambled egg. I've got beans. I've got a mixed array of cheese. Oh yeah. Mm. They look absolutely divine. Why not? Two buns together. Use breakfast time to regain energy. Because, trust me, you're going to need it today. One more thing. I eat a lot of greens. When any part of the Arabian Peninsula, Dubai, Qatar, 
There's a lot more appealing. Straight in. Best thing about a buffet. Round number two. This time around, I've gone for almost like a cheese board, some salami, some beautiful bread, and we are in Saudi Arabia. Do not forget the date. Like, dates are just full of energy, okay? A staple food, and this are part of the world, and quite rightly so, because they've got so many nutrients, right? So much packed full of energy, slow release energy, and I think that's one thing I've not had, dates. A lot of people I see don't stay, date, 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 right? And there's a good reason why they're having that. They're clever. I've just caught on. So wash it all down with a coffee. Uh, it's important, I think, to get that breakfast in, that boost of energy, definite. Uh, I would recommend it definitely to all pilgrims who are coming here. You are gonna need that energy because we will catch up with you, right? Where you boom, boom, boom. And by the time you know it, You'll be cold out because you've literally got no more battery to run on. Now I'm gonna hit the bed. I've just got up to read Zohar Salah and battered. I, that's the only word for it, right? I think where we've probably because we're not used to that much walking, right? Um, me especially, all right. And so I don't know about you guys, right? But you may be into the exercise thing. But we came directly from Heathrow. Um, and then a six hour fly and then the journey here and then literally put our bags down and get straight to Umrah. So I think we overdid it. So a lot of people go to Medina first, they chill out and then they make their way slowly, slowly to do the Umrah. I think it was a bit too much in one go. Uh, so that's something to consider. Okay, do I go to Mecca first? Am I feeling enthusiastic? Am I feeling really, really lively? Or do I just go to Medina first? chill out take it all in and then slowly get over to Mecca one day uh and then maybe the next day do do the umrah right so that's something to think about anyway right i'm still tired i don't think i'm going back to sleep i've had a little bit of kip uh but i think we'll probably get up explore the sort of uh the clock tower establishment and see if there's there's, there's other stuff in here, like the shops, etc. Let's see, we'll do that. We're obviously going to do Salah. Our our aim is going to be to do Salah in congregation. Uh, a lot more reward for it. So, yeah, that's how the day is panning out at the moment. Let's go. Right. Just to give you guys an idea, right? The next sort of leg of the journey after tomorrow is... Um, we have to get from Mecca to Medina. You're talking about 450 odd kilometers away. So we've been checking out some prices uh, with taxis and things like that. They're about 600, 700 real to get from Mecca where we are to, all the way to Medina, which is a sort of next leg uh, where the Prophet's mosque is and you go and do other things there. Uh, and the, the, the journey is quite a distance right so there's an the, there's an app that i'm going to be putting up which is the bullet train okay uh, i've booked that instead which takes about two hours 25 minutes so journey time is just one third really? of what you would do by car so it's a really fast train uh and the, the rough sort of cost is cost me business class for two of us is about 730 what? which is slightly more than a taxi but it's less time so it's definitely a really really good option i don't know what the bullet train is going to be like i've seen it on youtube videos but never really uh, been on it myself so yeah so that was just a little uh sort of how to get from Mecca to medina welcome back inside the shopping center but less crowded today I think the main days are like Thursdays and Fridays, 
Everything seems a little bit more chilled out downstairs today. Let me show you some of the merchandise you can buy here. discussing negotiations about these stools so you've got lots of people outside right in Hurra who are less able and they're sitting on the floor so it's a really good investment because people will just pass this along to each other so anybody can use it so as long as the the chair survives right you keep getting rewarded for it genius idea right so I think I'm gonna get a few of these and we go and give them to people outside these are little little hints and tips right and how you and I can earn extra reward, right? Time to negotiate. So as we're shopping, right, it's time for us. To, so you've got to rush and get to the main harem to pray. And all the shops shut down, everything just closed down, right? Everybody says, everyone out, see you later, come back after Salah, which is a beautiful thing, you know, everything just shuts down for the worship of God. Great, it's time to that's another salad done I mean the beauty and the unity look behind me You'll see every colour in the book, all shapes, all sizes, all nationalities, right? And every single person standing shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot. The, the, the solidarity and the unity is, is nothing I can explain. It's just absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy in a good way, right? Not in a bad way, right? And and every single person, and as soon as, and as, soon as it says, Allahu Akbar, that's it everything stops i mean that's the beauty of this place every single thing stops right one important thing right now i forgot to mention is make sure you are able to communicate with your team or if you're with your wife with your kids make sure everybody has got a mobile that connects to either the internet or you're able to phone them so i've taken out a data package with ee that allows me unlimited calls, texts, and gives me like a gig of data a day, which is like nine pound a day. Or you can buy a local SIM card, put it in the phone, and then you can still keep in contact. But it's very important. So if you can see, my wife is going to do Salah on the left, I went on to her right, but there's that many people now out here. How do you find her? You have to use the phone, right? So it's very important to keep in contact, don't lose each other, and always have a backup, right? a plan B, which is, Listen, if we don't see each other by so and so time, make sure that we meet at this place. Coming off the beat a little bit, right? The shops inside, uh, in the mall itself, they're quite standard, right? Not, I'm, I'm not really finding them that interesting. So we're going off the beat, going off the harem, right, onto the main road and see if we can find something else. Because a lot of people head this way. So I assume they don't live within the harem's perimeter. They're coming from other hotels and what have you not, which will be outside and see if we can find something unusual. Something to take back as gifts. Let's go. I'm giving you loads of reward ideas. Have a look at this. Got loads of pigeons around here and there's people selling pigeon food okay you can buy it and give it to them again another reward something you do while you're here let's find someone who's selling it come on As soon as you walk off the beat, Allahu Akbar, there's that many people here that spend literally their life savings just to come and you can, you can just tell, you understand, you can do so much, you can give dates out, you can give out Qurans, you can just willy-nilly walk around just feeding people honestly and they will take it happily but we're surrounded by smaller hotels here and there's so many people here, so many, it's unbelievable.
But a lot of people in need. We are proper off the beat here, right? But there are loads of food places around. I'll bet you any money they'll be cheaper and they'll be a lot better taste wise. You haven't got any of the big brands around here. You've got smaller restaurants, but there'll be a lot more authentic tasting. This is a massive contrast to the sort of behind me. If you look, if you can see it there, where I was and literally a stone throw away, the world is totally different. The world, you know, it's people from everywhere here. You got the, the two star, three star, one star hotels here. Everything becomes cheaper, you know, and these, these guys, I've been speaking to a few of them and you know, they have literally spent their entire savings to just come on this pilgrimage. So that's how important it is to them. There's so many people that want food, want fruit, want dates. Massive, massive contrast. That's the only thing I can say, literally a stone throw away. And they're all, they, they will travel from here go up the road to Hurram and stay there for the whole day and then return on the night just to sleep, right? Where we are going in and out after every Salah from our hotel, if we feel like it, in the hotel. It just seems really bad of us now. You know, after seeing this, may Allah make it easy for every person that's walked this. It may make it easy for every single person. Honestly, I'm just really shocked by it. Look at that for a milkshake shop. Time for a quick break. Oh yeah, mango. It's my favorite. Can't go wrong with that. It's time for my group. And we're back in the hotels. Mosque area. Have to be quiet. Before I get to the next Salah, right, there's one after the other, so you better be quick. And the food place is shut down uh, as soon as Salah starts happening. So we come to check out the shawarma place. Welcome to the eating table once again. Shawarma, uh, very, very skinny. Mm. Dip it into the sauce. Mm. Very garlicky. Barbecue. It's time for a beef wrap. Mm. Pickles in there. Chili. Beef is soft. Best thing about the view, right, is I can carry a monitoring when there's less people around the car by itself. Because for the last two or three days, it's been that super busy. It's unbelievable. So I want to go down when it's less busy. So I'll keep on looking at it from here. And then I'm thinking, instead of doing this on the Sunday, today's a Saturday, that if I can get there, it's now sort of like 10 o'clock-ish. If I can go there in the next sort of two hours and try to perform another du'a, which is the seven rounds around the Kaaba, I think that might work. I have a secret weapon because if, there's, if, it, if it's overcrowded, right, I've got a secret weapon that I can wear around my neck. I will explain to you. Let me go and get it. Right. Hey, it is. Okay. So from Umrah and Tawaf, what I've realized is there's a lot of pushing and shoving. It could it could feel really like you're struggling to breathe. I, 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 I can see a lot of people doing this, right? Secret weapon is this. You can get this off eBay or Amazon. Okay. It's a neck fan. Do you hear that? Look at this. The fans going right up like that. So, ventilation, ventilation, ventilation. It might work, it might not work. The battery might die when I'm down there, but I'm gonna carry on monitoring that, okay, from here and seeing if there's still a lot of people out there, a lot, a lot of people. And I don't, I wanna do it nice and slowly, nice and easy. I don't wanna shove anybody. I don't wanna push anybody. I wanna do it really nicely. So, wish me luck. All right, I can get back down there and do it in one piece, right, follow me. Look 
and that's at 11 o'clock at night it is heaving literally so many people i don't even ease down but whoa, it's not easing down very very soon let's get ourselves into the masjid and let's see that if it is easy and if we can do it on the bottom floor instead of doing the top floor the gate looks open i think we might be in luck about look right okay so from what i understand because it's super busy anybody with the iram on who's doing umrah right gets to go downstairs everybody else upstairs so normal clothes upstairs so what this guy just told me he said go and put your iram on and i said no i can't because i've like done my umrah like two days ago so he said no no just go and put your iram on and he winked as to say Go put your arm on. They're not going to ask you any questions. Then you can go downstairs. So my wife's gone inside because they don't ask women anything. They just let them go. But with the men that identify you, if you're not wearing your arm, that means you're not doing umrah. You're not completing an umrah. So therefore, if you're doing just doing tawaf, you get yourself upstairs. So I think majority of people just walk around with the arm on and just don't take it off as normal clothing. I think that's the whole secret behind it. I think they let you in normally, but it's when it's just super, super busy that it's like, you know, they prioritize the people who are doing Umrah, which is, you know what, understandable. I don't think I'm gonna break the rules. I'm not gonna go and put my arm on. I'd, I'd be a good boy. I'd probably just, just go upstairs and do the, the long round around the car by itself from, out, from, the, from the top instead of the bottom. So much for the fan. <laughs> My wife, right? She said, I don't know about you, right? But I'm going. I was like, okay. So she's gone on her tawaf, right? Around the car, but fair play to her. At the end of the day, she'd been sitting there and was so, so tired, so tired. And she'd been yearning to go inside. She just can't stop. And you know what? It's, it is that kind of a place where you are absolutely knackered. You go and sit down for half an hour. You think, you know what? Let's get back up. Let's do it again. Right, because you just want to make the most of it. I understand where she's coming from. So she's come for a tawaf. I think I'm just going to sit down and read some Quran. That's what I'm going to do. And I, hope, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to need this. Anyway, I should have given it to her. I should have just said, you know what? You can borrow my file as well. But this is one thing they don't mess around with. Every five seconds, right? They're like an army of cleaners. Look at these, like, literally an army of cleaners. They make sure they clean up and they clean up properly. You come out the way, they'll be done in five minutes. And this is everywhere, everywhere you go, the cleansiness is just unbelievable. Because the amount of people here, I can imagine this would get, it'll be, it'll be a health risk if they didn't clean up behind everybody. One brilliant thing they got here, check this out. Massaging comfort. Trust me, you'd need this. After you've been on the sort of pilgrimage, right? And your legs and your body is just gone. I say, mate, stop, right? You need one of these, let's get in here. The Forget the fan, you need one of these, and then I'm gonna jump on one of these. I swear, I can't even tell you how good this feels. On a normal day, this would be like, no, I don't really fancy that, but you know, with the aches and pains, I definitely need one of these. This is this is just this is exactly what I need. That's better, <laughs> right? Okay, so the other one was doing my feet and my sort of calves, but this is going up and I'm about whoa, oh, I can feel that in my back. Okay, he's doing your feet, your back. Oh, yeah, it's coming up. Right, it's just all the knots they need to be released. That is pretty cool. Not bad price wise, right? Uh, you're talking about six or seven quid for both of the machines for about 15 20 minutes. That's not bad at all. Right, it's been a long night. I eventually found my wife, she'd done the tomorrow without me. Right, fair play to her. You know what? She got through it, it wasn't meant to be for me. I'm gonna try tomorrow, and uh, yeah, it, it, we're knackered once again. We are knackered. So we're gonna hit the bed. So we will see you guys tomorrow. Fudge your time. Make sure you're up. Make sure you're watching. Stay tuned.